what is going on ladies and gentlemen horcrux here and welcome to the channel so if i hear the term broken build pts high aisles or any combination of those four or five words in one more title or thumbnail in regards to the high aisles dlc pts i that i think i'm gonna punch a baby in the trachea i i really am before we dive on into the bread and butter of today's video a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members who keep this channel afloat the best way is to support the channel is with a simple like and sub but if you want to go a little bit further and become an absolute chad we do have youtube memberships enabled as well as patreon some of the benefits include emojis shouts in each and every single one of my videos links to private discord channels and one-on-one -on -one pvp coaching so if you're feeling a little bit lost a little bit stuck everything is down in the description below now let's get into the video guys it is it is week one of the pts and if you are making builds on the pts and calling the meta and game breaking you are an absolute moron please just stop get some help we all know that eso is deprived of viewership is deprived of players and everyone is going to scrape at the bottom of the barrel to get all the views that they can but guys come on let's be real all this shit is not gonna go live but unpopular opinion though i actually secretly unbeknownst to you guys and i'm even going to retract and amend my previous video i want every single mythic item right now to be live like i'm not even being facetious i'm not being paradoxical in any way i am unironically not being ironic and there's a few reasons behind this number one i have not felt powerful as the solo players since like 2016 okay like nothing caters to the hardened veteran player nothing caters to people who have actually spent time into the game People who have put time into the game have been literally shoved underneath the rug. Like we are not the focus of any PVP changes, any PVE changes. It's all about the casual, casual, hardcore, toxic, casual, whatever PVE player or quote unquote ESO fam represent new players that Zoss decides to bring into an ultimately a dying game. So with that being said, changes that I personally think this is going to be a rant video. Just give you guys a heads up. It's probably gonna be like 10 minutes of me just getting things off my chest, going into the PTS and high aisles and kind of the way the channel is going to go and the way the content I'm gonna put out thereof. Here it is like 2 a.m. and I can't even go to sleep because this has been on my mind and I just have to say something about it, guys. Whether you agree with me or not, I really don't care. Horcrux is the anti-hero of the ESO community. Every Everyone needs someone to bash. Well, Horcrux is your guy. I wear that title proudly. So with the elongated preference out of the way, let's go into some of the changes that I personally think would make ESO so much more fun. So let's talk about these OP, broken, meta, disgusting, whatever furry mythic items that we have at our disposal. Reading these, I actually got excited reading these. And what I want you all to understand, what is written on paper is not what works in reality so let's talk about these op broken disgusting furry mythic items that everyone is all the hype about and they're disgusted and they're putting on these these fake videos about how like, if they do this i'm gonna quit playing the game if they do this oh zas doesn't know what they're doing guys personally all of this needs to go live if anything I think you should be able to equip as many mythic items as you damn well please if you spend the time to grind everything Yo, have at it. There is a philosophical difference between what works on paper, what looks OP on paper, and then what can actually happen, okay? So for example, the Serpent Ring that is going to slow you and give you amalgamation of damage. Here's the scenario. You cannot put that item on an average player or a new player and expect good results. Nothing will happen. Like, nothing will change. What does happen, is when the good players actually get a hold of these mythic items. So when a good player gets a hold of mythic item compared to an average player getting hold of the mythic item, the difference is night and day. I personally think every single mythic item should be weighted based on how many people are actually in your group. If you have two or more, the effects are diluted. If you have one person, you get the full effects. I mean, that's just my personal opinion on the matter. But the mythic items, like just because they sound OP, you cannot just hand them out and then all of a sudden this player is automatically OP. 
Xenomax has spent most of the time trying to bridge the power gap between the casual players down here and then the hardened vets. And right now it's nearing pretty close. The there's not much of a difference. There's not much of a power spike for the veteran player compared to like an average player. You know, two or three average players will be able to completely dig down a veteran player. And it didn't used to be like that. Years and years ago, you used to be able to 1v30. You know, in 2015, in 2016, you know, we'll 1v15, you know, 2017-18, uh, 1v10, 2018-19, uh, 1v8, 1v7, 2020, 21, into 22, it is very difficult to even get a 1v5. And this is coming from someone who has played this game on the regular every single season, every single patch, so I know what I'm talking about. So let me circle back around to my previous statement of saying that everyone who are posting these builds on the PTS are morons. Guys, you absolutely are. Just please stop. No, this is going to go live. Zoss is going to listen to the vocal minority. I mean, that's the way it always is. In actuality, if you want PvP to be more fun, you need to break as much as you possibly can. Because right now, guys, with the whole hybridization meta thing, like everything feels so bland. Everyone is running the exact same 10 sets. There's literally no build variety. Yeah, you can claim that, hey, yeah, the, this, this bar setup is different from this bar setup. But when you take a look at the quintessential like class, right, there's like 10 sets floating around and that's literally it. There's like 100 sets in the game. So why is the meta literally like the, the best in slot gear? It comes down to 10 sets and there's no if, ands, or buts about it. Just some sets are more stat heavier than others. And since you've hybridized everything, there's literally no reason to look at magic sets, I'm like, okay, here's the 10 top best, here's stamina sets, 10 top best, and now everything's meshed together, so you really don't have much build variety anymore. Zoss continues to just dumb down the game for the casual player, and I mean, that's fine. I mean, they have to pay bills, they have to make their quota, they have to, you know, feed their families and whatnot, and appease a casual player, but at the same time, it's literally just completely killing the game. If you look at Steam charts any day of the week, it's only 15 to 20,000 people on the US East. And of course you double it for like console players, you know, whatever. But to have a dwindling population like that, uh, this just ain't gonna work guys. The Elder Scrolls Online started out to be a PvP MMO. It was the first of its kind. The combat mechanics in this game is still by far, I've played 10, 20 other MMOs extensively World of Warcraft for years, Lost Ark as of late, pretty much no life that, like BDO, pretty much any other MMO you can think of. ESO has the best combat system, but quite frankly guys, like aside from the server performance, aside from lag, you know, aside from there being a lack of players, right, there is just some quintessential issues that's just wrong with PvP. Number one we've already discussed is the build variations. There's like 10 good sets. If you're not running at least one or two of these 10 good sets, then you're at a supreme disadvantage. Number two is all the mythic items and the quote unquote pay to win items. Mythic items, yes, are pay to win. I mean, let, let's be real. The quintessential definition of pay to win is investing money into a game to achieve some sort of advantage that you could not otherwise obtain if you had not put money into the game. So the only way to access these mythic items is if you have access to certain DLCs. So if you don't buy those DLCs, you don't have the mythic items. So therefore ESO is pay to win. And thirdly, there is literally no incentive to not ball group. There is no incentive to not just put on your one bar build and just spam mutagen, uh, grand healing auras, you know, whatever, and just stay in a ball group and completely lag out the servers. I mean, there's no incentive to run alone. There's no incentive to be in a small group. And I think that's where Zoss has really fell flat is that there is just no variety. Like there's no incentive to do battlegrounds. There's no incentive to dueling. I really think if Zoss could just work on just the basic fundamentals of whether or not there would be something to actually work for in the PVP environment, that might actually coax more people to stop playing PVE and come give PVP a chance. Personally, if you want to fix ESO and the state of PVP, which is in right now, you need to put a healing cap on groups of four or higher. For example, if you are a solo player, okay, you should get 
the tooltip amount of healing, the tooltip amount of damage, yada yada across the board. As soon as you start adding people to your group, healing in particular, this is where Zoss misses the mark, especially on the PTS with the champion systems. They lower mitigation, they lower damage, but they kept healing the same, which is so back asswards and like the PvP devs are just so utterly disconnected from the PvP environment and the player base, it is laughable, okay? So what needs to happen is that every person, you know, maybe above a two man group, your healing needs to be diminished by at least 10 percent up to, we'll say, like 50 percent for how many people in your party. So, for example, if you have a 12 man group, healing across the board is going to be diminished by 50 percent. Right now, the healing is astronomically high. There's nothing you can really do um, other than fighting the lag and the amount of smart healing. And I can literally run up to someone, hit them with a 10K leap into a 14K whip and they are back up to full immediately um, that is not fun that is just butt mashing that is the most simplistic brain dead maneuver that you could possibly ever put into a game is smart healing first of all in world of warcraft if you are a healer that is the hardest job in the entire game tanking yeah whatever dps yeah whatever but healing actually required skill it actually required you to be proactive and not reactive and you actually had to aim your spells efficiently so let me go off on a little bit of a tangent on why I haven't been doing a lot of ESO content. I've actually been working quite a bit, you know, first of all, and then I've been playing a lot of Lost Ark, but I feel that the content creators in ESO, like they're, they're, they're all washed up, they're done, sell outs, like no one really cares about PvP anymore. Um, ever since they shut Zilla down in the forums or, you know, whatever the, the whole drama situation was, um, no one has really cared. Um, I feel that the content creators have there's a divide between content creators. There are the ones who have to simp for ESO because this is their livelihood. This is how they pay their bills. This is how they support their family. That's fine. And then there is the literal opposite of ESO content creators who will tell you, you know, how it is and complain and bitch and cry about the game, but don't actually do anything <laughs> about it, um, except make clickbaity videos. I myself, I'm not going to pat myself on the back or act like I'm some sort of saint. What have I actually done to help the PvP community? Well, tips, tricks, anything you guys ever need to know, I'm at your disposal. Please use me. I've even applied for a community developer managers multiple times. I've applied for engineering positions specifically within Zoss to try to get on the back end to try to work on the game to do what I can to use my skill set to further better the game and my small influence that I have here in the PvP ESO community to try and make a difference, not with the company of Zoss itself, but with the player base. Like you can talk to anyone who comes to me or asks me a question like if I don't know something about it I'm going to not bullshit you and I'm going to find the answer out for you whether if I don't know it I'm sure I can get in contact with someone who does know it so I really wish that ESO content creators will put forth more of an effort to not only help the community but be more productive uh, more constructive when, when it comes to putting out content like do you think the the devs don't see all these videos and like all the toxic thumbnails and like i i get it um i get that you know people you know need views obviously for ad revenue and you know whatever but so let's kind of circle back to, to my original point a little too far off subject but i felt like that uh, needed to be said and that uh, i just think that um a lot of creators are at fault. I'm definitely at fault for ESO's decline. I think, you know, all, all the good people have left there. There's a few, you know, good people still around, you know, the good old boys at Deltia, Outcast. Um, so thankfully we still have those fine sausages, but, uh, all right, so I'm getting on a little bit of a tangent. We're going to circle back to my original point uh, about mythic items and you know whatnot. But uh, I feel that you know, what I said kind of needs to be said and kind of needs to be heard that unless like we do something as a community, guys, like, I, I don't think this game's going to get any better and everyone's going to jump ship to the next popular MMO, the next popular game that comes out. You know, Dr. Disrespect has Project Moon. All right, guys, I'm just going to tell you right now when that game comes out, I'm going to full send it into Project Moon, um, just give you guys a heads up. It's gonna come out sometime at the end of the year. Um, already got a lot of plans for that. So definitely stick around. We will still be doing ESO content until the day we die probably because this is actually a good game when it works.
So again, going back to uh, my original statement about mythic items and uh, what I think PvP needs, um, I honestly think you should just leave. You know, if I was a developer, I would leave the mythic items completely alone. I would let them break the game. I would let people cry and bitch and complain about it until their heart's content. Personally, I, being unpopular opinion, I think Cyrodiil needs to be just literally deleted. Cyrodiil is way too big, first of all. Cyrodiil can only handle like 100 people at a time. Um, so unless you're going to put in an entirely new map for us to have fun on and compete and have these open world battles, then I personally think that you should just delete Cyrodiil. Um, what that would do is that that would force a lot of people to go to the sewers where these servers actually work. So the sewers will be filled up. There'll be a lot more action all the time, non-laggy action. Yeah, the lead bug's still there, but I mean, that's a small price to pay, right? Um, this would revitalize Battlegrounds. So having a flood of player bases into Battlegrounds will allow you to put in modes to where you can specifically queue for your game type instead of there only being like a handful of people and you can only have two different playlists because if you break that playlist into too many different sub playlists, you're just not going to have enough players for the matchmaking system. So that would fix the battleground situation. And then what you need to do from there, you need to put incentive on battlegrounds like titles, like like they had a good idea before, like titles, skins. You need to make it something more right you need to have not, not these little motifs that like you need to physically gain something from it you know where it'd be uh, maybe work toward a house you know something that's going to take you like a month two months of grind for you know it's something like that you know really cool um same thing for the imperial city sewers yeah tell our stones are you know okay but uh, maybe there can be some sort of different currency maybe there's some sort of skill point grind you know to give people incentive to you know even come to pvp even if you're a pve enthusiast right and if the devs really cared at all about fixing and balancing PvP, I personally, guys, healing is incredibly bad. I've said that before. Everyone knows it. Healing is completely overtuned. Please, Zoss, if you're listening to this or if anyone's listening to this, just nerf healing per amount of people you have in your group. Just make it a percentage base. Hey, I got fucking five people in my group. Yeah, we're going to do 50% less healing and just kind of cap it off at that. Which will lead into a, another opportunity is that the reason that we are not getting PvP changes is because there's no way to monetize it. I mean, let's be real. I'm just going to be frank with everyone watching this. that There is no way to monetize PvP right now in its current state. Um, I've suggested many times that there be some sort of house, some sort of open world environment that you can literally purchase for like 5,000 crowns, you know, whatever, and have it customized like Forge mode in Halo or, you know, Fortnite or something like that. Um, this would, or even have it to where you can make your own rule set for Battlegrounds, invite people and adjust rule sets, adjust teams. Any little change like that would really spice up the PvP community and it would allow the players to kind of build the game for you instead of the de devs giving you a house or giving you the, the end result give us the tools to make our own world give us the tools to make our own rule sets make our own maps you know of course we can't make them from scratch obviously it, it, it's not like the steam workshop but at least give us a plane in which kind of like the cold harbor plane in which we can modify it to make a small like 1vx like type of arena and again sell it for 4,000 crowns 5,000 crowns hell i don't know and again guys uh, what i want you all to understand is that the only reason pvp is getting looked at is, is why the devs even made any comments on it is because whatever is going wrong with the fundamental codes of eso like it's affecting pve and pve is their money makers so if this was not affecting pv content anyway pvp would not be getting the lot of day all right, so I know I was all over the place in this video. I just had a lot on my mind as of late, and I didn't really organize it in a digestible fashion, but if some freak of nature, you made it to the end of this video, please guys, let me know down in the comments what you think on anything I said. Am I right? Am I wrong? I would love to have a discussion with you guys. It really made my day. It'll give me something to do over the weekend because, you know, Pokemon Go Community Days this weekend, so I'll be doing a lot of that tomorrow. So I don't expect a video tomorrow, but I may stream a little bit later on in the day. Eh, who knows? But for real, guys, a huge glory shout out to my patrons and also my community members who support this channel again. And don't forget to like and sub if you like this sort of content where I just kind of sit down and just be real with you guys and talk about you know, what's on my mind and the way I feel the state of PvP and the 
road that ESO is taking. Um, let's uh, see what kind of changes are going to come about and let's uh, pray that we don't have another card game. All right, peace.